Hi, thanks, uh, Sarah. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. So uh, I don't know if you've been attending the sessions the past day, so it's me again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'll be talking about electric bicycle specification operations and the economics. So I think electric bicycles were included as part of the agenda, which is something very common to almost all LGUs in, 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 in the Philippines. So then we'll be talking about, uh, of course, you know this already, bicycles, what are bicycles? So, but we'll just like, just, Let's just look at uh, what, how, how are tricycles used in the different areas of the country. And then the changing space of tricycles, the e trike technology, e trike economics, operations, design and viability. Then there's always a question to retrofit or not, because we see now a lot of um, tricycles that are being retrofitted, or even some other, that there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, pedicabs that are fitted with uh, with the uh, electric uh, drive trains, okay, mostly uh, hub motors. And then let's try to look at some key points. Yeah. So I think you're, you're, you're all familiar with the bicycles are used for public or family transport. And right now there is factor 650,000 public transport units all over Metro Manila and the daily kilometers travel is 40 to 100. Mostly used for last mile, but uh, I think you all know that the provinces is the main mode of made of uh, intra-city uh, transport and intra-municipality transport. So you only have, you only have motorcycle, you only have jeepneys okay, for, uh, connecting cities and connecting municipalities, but within each, it's uh, the tricycles are, are the main, uh, are the main uh, prime, uh, prime movers. While in uh, urban areas like Metro Manila, uh, it's mostly in a, it's mostly in a, in local roads, so it's supposed to be main local roads, main roads. That's supposed to be um, urban urban areas. But with that alone, that indicates that uh, if there's a different, if there's difference in application, it, that means also that uh, most probably we we need different bicycle electric bicycles for 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 each. And also uh, going further, if you go around the the Philippines, then um, you will see a lot of uh, electric, uh, a lot of tricycle design. So it varies a lot. So meron sa mga, let's say, sa butuan, okay, or pagadian, yung tricycles is uh, parang lagi nagdadasal, nakaharap sa langit. Okay? So you would see it there, the lower lower left. You know? um, but for some areas like uh, Puerto, Princesa, uh, Puerto Princesa, it serves also some uh, some sort of a sort of a, of a jeepney, so bigger capacity yung mga yung mga uh, tricycles. But in Metro Manila, Manila, we see a lot of the normal tricycles, around three to four uh, passenger capacity tricycles. So smaller one, because uh, in Metro Manila or urban areas are normally used for um, for last mile last mile services. And uh, we will see also on, on the right how tricycles are, are are loaded. So normally they're loaded beyond their, their, their capacity. So why am I mentioning this thing? So these are things that needs to be considered when we, we now look at the, the right electric uh, tricycle solution. So we have to be very uh, conscious about uh, what, how, how the tricycle will be used, how will it be loaded, where it will be running, because all these things will define the design of the tricycles. And uh, so no single electric tricycle will fit all. So you have to be conscious about, uh, about uh, um, those things. And right now, there's a changing phase of a uh, Philippine bicycle. So before, we know that a bicycle to be a motorcycle fitted with a sidecar, but now it's getting different. Uh, if you go around, let's say you go you go to um, to Tagaytay, you now see the one on the upper left. So you mga bad judge, you're 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 now having these bicycles that are symmetrically designed. So you have the driver in front, and you have you have a wheel in front, and you have two wheels at at, at, at the back. So it's getting uh, very, uh, very common now. So I think it's just that uh, the the the, uh, the public and the tricycle sector are uh, um, realizes now that that is the better design. That is a more convenient design, both for the drivers and also for the uh, also for the commuting uh, for the commuting public. Okay, uh, let's try to look at the technology of electric uh, tricycles. I, I want to take first um, a, a tricycle that is uh, driven in in main roads, 
And uh, normally what we have right now are the e DOE e tricycles. You see that on the right. So in, in, in those cases, in this case, uh, the speed could go up to yeah, 45 kilometers. So you will see in there, a 35 kilometers per hour, you will see there in the upper left corner, you will see there the, um, the drive cycle. See, drive cycle is a speed time trace uh, of, 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 um, of, of the vehicle. So, uh, so it could go beyond 35 kilometers. In fact, in some cases, I believe in the provinces, it could even go beyond 40, 45, 50, 50 kilometers. And uh, depending on the load, that, that gets translated into the speed power distribution per, uh, graph, which now indicates there that uh, somehow you would need a tricycle, um, electric tricycle motor, uh, a tricycle powered by a 4 kilowatt motor. So, you will see on the on the graph on, on the right of the drive cycle, you will see in there how the power distribution requirement of a tricycle looks like. And um, yeah, most of those dots are, are below four kilowatts. So um, four kilowatts is your rated power, but it doesn't mean that you're only confined to that uh, power range. You can actually go beyond four kilowatts at, uh, at very short, uh, uh, snippets, very short time. So, so, uh, so at the average, classicals used in main roads should at least be four kilowatts, and I think it should be enough also, or even for those used in in in, in the in the provinces. Uh, if you want to have a range of forty or fifty kilometers, it, then you should have a battery of around four point two. Uh, Kilowatts and the passenger capacity, these are six plus one. So this is designed for bigger services. And this currently costs around 350,000. Uh, so what I'm, why am I showing this? So if someone offers you a tricycles and it's to be used in a, in main roads and the having capacity, passenger capacity is around six to around six uh, passengers, then you have to check what's the, what's the traction motor rating and what is the battery what is the battery uh, rating? If it's below than that, then it must be, it, it could be underpowered. Of course, it depends on how you're gonna use it and what's the speed really in the areas that you're gonna use it um, in. Um, let's now try to look at, let's now try to have a quick look of an electric, uh, electric uh, three-wheeler three economics. So this is a comparison. So I'm not comparing, by the way, I'm not comparing anymore an electric tricycle with the, with the normal tricycle that we have. Because in here, we're, we're looking at a bigger tricycle, like bigger electric tricycle. So I'm comparing it with the Bajaj Maxima Z, which is very common right now. Um, uh, investment cost at electric tricycle, similar to that of... Um, of DOE, of course, the one of DOE is a bit uh, more expensive because that is fitted with a very expensive, very expensive battery. Uh, but if you're going to use a, a, a normal lithium phosphate battery, then you, you're looking at an investment around 350,000 pesos. Uh, compare that with a Bajaj Maxima, which costs you 221,000 pesos. So you have a very big cost difference there, upfront cost difference of 129,000 pesos. So that would be a very big issue for, for the tricycle uh, sector. Okay. Also, um, it has always been asked, uh, how, how do we replace it? How much would be the batteries? So okay, over time, you have to replace your batteries depending on the type of batteries you're using. So it could be every three years, it could be four years. It also, dep also depends on the size of your battery and uh, what is the daily uh, mile age. So, of course, um, that is also an added cost. So if you get the difference, okay, that is an added expense. However, utilizing uh, electric tricycles, like the, the, um, the electric versus the Bajaj Maxima Z, could provide you significant energy, energy uh, savings. So in fact, uh, it easily supersedes the uh, investment cost. So, and, um, Electric tricycles, like also electric jeepneys, requires very little maintenance. So it provides you also a lot of, uh, with a lot of regular maintenance savings, a lot of midlife rebuilding. So I'm going midlife rebuilding. So uh, normally if you have a car, you would, at some point you would have to 
you would have to rebuild the engine. You would have to uh, you would have to overhaul the engine. You would have to paint your vehicle. So so th this uh, this is what we mean by midlife rebuilding. So they also extract some some savings, and then of course you have a since you have a more expensive vehicle, and at the end of the day, if you want to, to sell it at the end of the operational life, you want to sell it, and assuming that um, um, it, the salvage value is a function of your investment cost, then you get also some, some savings in there in the long term. Okay, by the way, these are net present values. The discounted uh, the discount um, interest is was set at 10%. And um, the use of electric classicals provides you health benefits, provides you greenhouse gas uh, social cost reductions or savings. Um, it improves the economy by reducing the amount of uh, fuel imports that will be uh, that we need to to do uh, to 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 power the uh, the, the tricycles. Um, so the balance of payments is difference between the uh, importation and the. Uh, and the and the and the export, so it provides you also with a lot of a, a lot a lot of savings along that line, and then of course lastly, but on taxes since petroleum uh, is taxed more, then government is set to lose some some tax revenue, but at the end of the day, uh, you get financial savings, uh, and then you get also economic uh, the country also gets some economic uh, significant economic savings emanating from the health greenhouse gas and balance of a uh, balance of um, payments so if you look at if you're going to look at this economics the main issue really in the tricycle adoption is the higher initial cost then second operational limitations so we know that uh, these uh, tricycles are fitted with batteries that in some cases have limited range so just imagine if your average uh, daily kilometers is 70 and then the range of your battery is only 30 it means that at some point during the day you would have to you would have to um to charge the battery and in some cases it uh depending on the battery and depending on the charging that you used it takes a lot of time so that's one and then second um which means also this uh, your, your your um this confines also the operation of the vehicle just around the battery swapping stations or just around just within the vicinity where where charging points are are available so uh you have some operational limitations in there and then also since we're dealing with the higher initial cost and um considering also that the budget maxima they are widely available and are internally mostly are internally financed by the suppliers themselves then uh, we can say that electric classicals have very limited financing options Okay, while uh, a number of electric tricycle suppliers are also financing the uh, financing the sales of these units themselves, uh, these are mostly SMEs, so um, they have some fund limitations, so they can only loan to uh, to a uh, limited amount of uh, a limited amount of units. So there's a need to expand the financing options okay, for electric tricycles. And there's a minimum daily VKT thresholds. So what, what do we mean by that? If you look at the economics, um, the savings mostly comes from the energy used. Okay, but um, the energy consumption or cost depends on the amount of energy consumed, and that depends on the uh, daily vehicle kilometer threshold. We are going to talk more about that, but the main idea behind it is uh, if you're only using the, if the daily mileage of tricycle says only 20 kilometers, then you might not have some, uh, some payback period in there. So there are there's a certain minimum daily threshold depending on the tricycle design. And then a uh, varying operational regimes, which I'm going to discuss more later. <clears throat> yeah. So what are the um, well, um so what are the the options now? So okay one is as we're talking about operational limitation. Uh, one is to to um, to list the batteries, so instead of buying them, and then using a bigger battery, so that you address also your you address also your uh, the the range uh, limitations. So if you remove the battery cost, okay, from the vehicle, so you only buy the vehicle without the battery, um, your the cost difference drastically goes down. So if you recall previously, it's one hundred twenty nine thousand. It goes down to around fifty nine. Uh, but of course, that increases your 
battery rental expense. Because before, what happens here is you buy one set of battery. If you're, if you're talking about swapping, you buy one set of battery and then you lease the second battery or you rent the second battery. Okay, but this time, the idea is you buy only the unit without the battery and then you lease a big battery which you can use, so which you don't have to charge midday. <clears throat> so that also that increases on the other hand your battery uh, um, uh, replace uh, battery rental cost. This time it's going to be purely battery rental cost because you're not owning the battery. So at least I think one thing good also with this setup is you don't have to think anymore about the, oh I'm going to replace the battery I have to save for it because you're only renting the because you're only renting the. Uh, uh, the battery okay. that somehow reduces your your financial savings okay but it makes things it makes things more more afford affordable um, upfront um there's also an option to use fast charging batteries so you don't have to increase the size of your batteries you just have to charge them fast so um you don't have to bring down the um you 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 you, you, you um you, need, you don't need to really increase the capacity with the battery because anyway, you can charge them at midday um, at a very fast rate. So maybe 15 to 20 minutes and then you're fine. You're fine again. Um, okay, in this case, okay, it increases your battery, um, your battery uh, rental, um, your battery um, okay, rental cost because the, the, these batteries are, are, uh, are more expensive but um but uh, this type of batteries are okay, are very durable so in the long run you actually also save now um however in both cases if you're going to do leasing then your your battery system needs to have certain um finan uh, certain cer certain technological features like gps tracking remote condition monitoring and maintenance control Pamper tracing and proofing, and then uh, charging encryption. Alam naman natin na yung Pilipino is a mabuting thing. So kung nilagay mo yung bat, if I'm the supplier, I put in my battery in there, I have at least. So chances are, pwedeng buting tingin yun nung gumagawa kasi uh, curious dun. So dapat tamper, uh, tamper proof siya, and dapat trace mo kung talagang buting ting nga yun. No? Then I'll track mo kasi that's a very expensive equipment. And then you, you should know also kung pasira na yung isang battery or hindi para, para maagapan mo agad. And it's important also for the one that's doing the battery releasing to, to, um, to uh, look at yung charging um, encryption. Ibig sabihin, hindi niya pwedeng isaksak sa kahit anong, anong charger because that's what's the main cause of, uh, of battery uh, deterioration kung, kung hindi mo magamit ka ng ibang, ng ibang chargers. Okay, by the way, before I continue, uh, saan nagagaling mostly yung additional savings dito sa second part? If you look at energy costs, it's a lot, it's a lot bigger. Because uh, if you've attended my talk the previous day, uh, two days ago, um, mas mahal ang mag-battery swap ka. Okay, or uh, com compared with, ano, compared with, um, compared with fast, uh, fast charging. Now, we're talking about uh, daily vehicle kilometers traveled. Okay, so these are just some of the thresholds. So this is the base unit. Malita the battery, pero nagsiswap ka, and then you have your high-range batteries, then you have your fast-charging batteries. Uh, simulan ko sa fast-charging batteries at high-range high batteries. High-range high, high range batteries. So dito makikita natin that the financial saving increases with the uh, Okay, with the um, daily vehicles, vehicle kilometers. So in fact, so may kita natin dito, it crosses the, the zero line at around what? At around uh, 35, around 32 kilometers. So kung yung daily range ng takbo mo is below 32 or below 35, then magandang mag-ordinary mo a tricycle ka na lang. That's because you won't have any uh, savings from there. So there is that that threshold, it should be at least that amount of a, of a kilometers. Now, if you do, if you do, um, then the base, the base unit, which is a smaller battery, and then you swap somewhere. So, um, in here, 
it increases your savings. And then at some point, you need to, because in here, you own the battery. But para pagdating mo rito, kailangan mo na ng extra battery kasi lagpas na sa range ng battery mo. So kailangan mo na mag-rent. So it suddenly goes down and then it goes up. Again, so may mga threshold ka na na tinitignan. Okay. Um, these values, this graph would vary depending on the design, on the price of the vehicles. But I just want to point out in here na na uh, importanting tignan yung daily vehicles, vehicle kilometers. So by the way, this is only for just for one for one model. Okay. Now, uh, bakit may mga pictures dito on the side? <clears throat> In Metro Manila, karamihan ng electric tricycle adoption dito are either subsidized, just like the one of uh, Manila City, or donated, just like the one of uh, DOE, and then uh, distributed to the operators at a very low um, uh, monthly, monthly payments. But if you go to Coron, if you go to Naga, if you go to Boracay, um, walang subsidy should, but it works. So bakit sila gumagana doon? Kasi in the provinces, as we mentioned earlier, uh, tricycles are the main mode of transport. Say for, for, uh, for Butuan, for Butuan, it's the main mode of transport. Okay, or, or Naga. So malalaki yung mile age nila in a day. So that's why it works. So I think that also uh, supports the, the graph that we have here. That, that there's really that Minimum mile age that you need to look at. Okay, I don't want to discuss any more those red, red uh, text in there. because really more on the technical side. I think I want to stick with the, more on the concepts. Now, <clears throat> um, clear operational regime. This is one of the issue kung saan kung bakit may mga attempts to adopt tricycles that at some point natigil. Uh, um, most of the tricycles looks like um, the one in the picture, electric tricycles. Malaki yung capacity. A same idea is uh, it serves, it, it can bring in, it, it can carry more passengers, it can have greater revenue. And then eventually you have better, better um, payback period, better, yeah, mas faster, mas, mas economical siya, mas financially rewarding. Um, but right now, we know that we're having the PUV modernization, the transport modernization, modernization program. And DOTR advocates that, uh, pushes that uh, key tricycles, that uh, routes that were previously served by tricycles, but the demand has already increased, okay, will now be served by class one GPs, which is, which is the right move, because bigger, bigger capacity. So enough na yung Kaya na, kaya na ng demand yung class 1 GPT. So, it's better to adopt class 1 GPTs in there. So, the question now is that in most of those routes, yun yung ruta na si reserve nitong bigger electric tricycles na to. So, the question now is where do you move them? Where do you put them? So, if you're going to compare their economics with class 1 GPTs, hindi ba nanalo yung economics sila? Okay. Um, they will always uh, be more, more expensive compared to class one GPs. So, and comparing them with bicycles, with the normal bicycles, the smaller ones, hindi rin mananali economics nila. Kasi normally, ang operations sa mga to is mga nasa internal roads lang. So if they operate in internal roads, and normally they operate, they deserve uh uh, um, last mile services, point to point, wherein people don't wait anymore for other passengers, they, they, they would have them as special trips. Um, then their added revenue provided by their bigger capacity um, won't, won't, won't matter. So, so you now have a problem. Where do you put out these bigger tricycles? It can't compete against last one GPs. It can't compete with small tricycles in smaller in, in, in internal roads. Okay, where, where the operations will be okay, will be uh, different. So in that case, then you might need to look at okay, smaller. We might need to bring down 
the sizes of electric, uh, electric tricycles. So we might have to consider those. And in that case, we're looking at this configuration around two kilowatts, battery size around 2.5 kilowatt lithium phosphate uh, batteries, uh, range of around 50 kilometers, passenger of three plus one, and that breaks down your cost of 250,000. And if you could compare that to a Bajaj RE, Bajaj RE, it may be a little bit Okay, then you will see now that you have a positive, positive um, economics. So I, I think this only emphasizes that no, no single solution fits all. If you really have to consider what is daily mileage, siya, saan siya tumatako, how the vehicles operate, um, yeah, and, and look for the right, uh, look for the right uh, solution. Now, there's also a talk about uh, why not just retrofit. Okay, so, number one, lack of uh, lack of standards. So, uh, right now, uh, in the Bureau of Product Standards, in our technical committee, we're still defining, we still have to craft a standards for for electric vehicle retrofitting. Um, it's a bit difficult because normally the process is you look for international standards and then just you just review it. And then check whether it's applicable for you. If not, then modify it a bit. Uh, but uh, there is no international standards currently available for, for uh, electric vehicle retrofitting. Um, and also, if you want to modernize, we're not just talking about the power train. We know also already also we know already how 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 uh, inconvenient and how uncomfortable it is to ride the, uh, the some, some, not all, some of the uh, tricycles, lalo yung mga mababa, you know? so, so, um, so at some point, we would, have to, uh, we would have to migrate to a more convenient uh, design. And then most units are so old anyway, so why still retrofit them? Why not just shift them to a new one? And, um, but uh, right now, there's a government-funded project that is ongoing to, to look at to look at this possibility and to, then to develop a kit, which could also be a basis for, for the crafting of a an internal or locally uh, uh, developed uh, standards for for tricycle retrofitting and cheap new retrofitting. Okay, just some key points. Um, you have to look at uh, what's the performance that you need, and uh, you have to look at also the initial cost that may be sheltered by the economics, and uh, you have to look at the long-term economics uh, for for um, for an electric classical program to work. We can also say that uh, uh, for an electric classical program to work, and you have to satisfy performance uh, requirements. You have to satisfy the initial cost. Uh, you shouldn't have a, a very big price disparity upfront and. Um, uh, the long-term economics would have to be would have to be positive. Uh, you need to look for the right solution because, as I always emphasize, different areas, different applications, different mileage uh, requires different uh, different solutions. Uh, electrification might always be the solution, but if it is, if it is, then adopt it. Um, if the daily BKT is too short, then you'll have a you'll have a, um, a problem. If uh, energy costs or power costs in the area is too expensive, then you can have a, you can have a problem. Does it mean that if it works in one area, it will also work in your, in your area? If it is uh, very heady, then check the economics. Because if it is very heady, chances are you need bigger motors, more expensive units. So, um, so yeah, so you have to weigh all this. Uh, you have to weigh all these things. It's good always to have a really a scientific study in the area before, and then a, a an unbiased look at uh, what's the applicability of electric bicycles in your in your uh, localities. And the best solution may not always be the most advanced one, as you will see here in the picture. This now get common in 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 uh, in Europe and in other parts of the world. You have there a pedalec. So I don't know if familiar with pedalec. No? So pedalec is basically an electric, electric as uh, it's a pedal assisted electric, uh, electric um, um, vehicle. So while you pedal, as a sense system, and tulungan ng, ng electric motor yung yung tao. So gu, so gumagaan. So 
So again, going back to the car scenario, we're in higher capacity bicycle routes are now being converted into class one units and that leaves now the uh, internal roads to be served by bicycles. The speed in internal roads are not that fast. So why not adopt something like this? You, you, you can do a pedelec, that solves your problem on charging, that solves your problem on battery cost, uh, and that solves your problem on, on cost. Okay, so uh, thank you very much.